Some of us, throughout our lives, we have been taught some things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? All right, before I came to Christ, I was taught some things. Yes. And I traveled my life, believing, had all the stuff in my heart, and didn't care. So whenever I got in a situation of anger, the devil was in my ear, and I didn't even know. I'm walking around resentful, and, and, and I had no defense. But listen, I'm not there now. I got the Holy Spirit. I'm of this new covenant. It's far better. The Holy Spirit is in me. Now when the word comes, I receive it. And even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to allow it to work, and I'm going to allow myself to be broken. Hallelujah. He's in the brokenness. Hallelujah. That scripture I just read lines it all up. Again, we discussed the process of the word. It's got to be heard. It's got to be received. Then we obey it. That is where the brokenness comes into play. And once we obey it, it transitions itself to the heart. And then God changes your heart. Some of us, we know, even today, y'all, I still got some stuff in there that in my heart that God's working out. Yes. I'm not there yet. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I am lined up with his word. Amen. 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 I'm going to obey his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to close with this story. I want y'all to gather your Bibles. Turn with me to Luke chapter 9. The Lord talking to somebody. Is the Lord talking to you this morning? Amen. Amen. Brokenness. Saints, I've been broken. Amen. I've been broken. We all know this story. When you have it, say amen. amen. We know this is the feeding of the 5,000. Reading from verse 12, it says, When they began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions. For we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. Notice now there is a, a, a real, uh, 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 they're not nearly on the same page, are they? The disciples are actually making a lot of sense, aren't they? They're not showing that they could care. They're not showing that they, that they don't care. So there's no way I'm thinking we're going to be here, right? I mean, my wife, we had, she, had, she loved to have people over the house. Sometimes I look at her and I'm saying, honey, you sure we got enough food? Oh, you, she, you need to trust me. You know, I've done this before. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about 60 people. They had about 1,500, 2,000 people here. What I'm showing you is the disconnect. Jesus is saying, you give them something to eat. Interesting now, this word give has the same Greek definition as the word put. Didomi. All right? Greatly modified by the connection. Jesus now is injecting a word that is going to ignite the heavenly places to do a miracle. Y'all seeing that right there, right? And then they go on and say, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go by for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And what does it say next? And they did so and made them all sit down. So we hear the words of Jesus. They received the word. They acted on the word and told everyone to sit down. Now, they had to put them in groups of 50, which is something the Lord has been trying to get in my head, that my I bless organization. Hallelujah. And I don't know who that's for, 
But some of us, we're a little sloppy in the way we're doing things. Sloppy on the job, sloppy in our marriages, sloppy with our finances, sloppy in this. And it's hard for God to bless organization. I'm not trying to say I'm all that because I need some help in areas too. But when he tells them, he sits them down. Jesus don't have to do it. He sits, sits them down in the 50s and they obey him. But here's the key. He took the five loaves and two fish and looked up to heaven. And what did he do first? He blessed them. He's got bread. Now that's a picture of you and me. When we came to Christ, we had very little. We didn't have much to offer him. Did we? When I came to Christ, he just said, come as you are, Mike. Right. Just come just as you are. How many of you know what I'm talking about? He accepted you the way you are. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He just said, come right on in. I'll clean you up. Don't worry about it. You just come as you are. And some of us, when we came to Christ, we still held on to some habits. We weren't quite holy yet. My first few years walking with Christ, I still had the lust for life. Still drank the coolers on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? But I'm loving the Lord. But he took me as I was. With the big afro and the whole nine, he took me as I was. That's what I love about the Lord. Huh? There wasn't much there. Compared to the need, there was not a lot there. Yet God said, watch me. Watch me when I get a hold of it. Right? So he blessed the bread. But what did he do next? He broke it. Oh, hallelujah. He broke it. The word broke there means to divide. So when you and I come to, come to Christ, he, he blesses us, but then he's got to start to divide us. He's got to start injecting his word to get a better connection to separate us from some stuff. He's got to start the brokenness in our life. I'm here today to tell you I've been broken. Hallelujah. And as he broke the bread and the fish, he gave it to the disciples. And as they began to give it to the people, it multiplied. Y'all see, that's the picture of me right now. When I came to Christ, I had very little to offer. But I allowed him to break me. And now that he has broken me, Y'all can see now he's using me to multiply who he is. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? I don't know who's in the house today, but let the Lord work in your heart. Let him do what he's doing. Some of us in here, we have gone through some difficult times. And I know, you know, some of us have had some difficult losses. Loss can be tough. There's a brother that I was ministering to who, who, who went through a rough relationship. And he thought he was probably going to end up marrying this girl. And out of nowhere, things happened and she just kind of walked away from the relationship. And I said to this, to this brother, I said, man, let God take you through this. Don't get it. You don't need to go talk to no other females. You don't need let the Spirit of God work with you and let Him heal you. Because when you come out of this, you are going to be so strong. Oh, that brother's serious today. That brother's serious today. He ain't worried about nothing today. He ain't worried about nothing. The times that we have allowed God to take us through, how many of you know you're stronger today because you allowed him to take you through? I've been broken. Hallelujah. Brokenness is a shift in what I believe. Brokenness is deliverance from a mindset that says all I do is fail. Brokenness is the ability to let go of something that you've been holding on to for a long time. Brokenness is when you can pray for an enemy until your heart has forgiven it. Brokenness is not only acknowledging the need for change, but embracing it. Brokenness is knowing that the thorn I have in my side today will bring grace tomorrow. Brokenness is waiting on the Lord until he renews your strength. Yes. Brokenness is 
trusting that even though I've been deeply wounded, God will mend my broken heart. Brokenness is known that even though I feel weak, I will lift up my eyes to the hills which come up my help. Brokenness reminds me that even though I feel anxious, I will remain still and know that he is God. 